Hello, Booktube. <laughs> this is Lindy, and I've got no books to tell you about right now. This video is about my Yukon farm adventure. So if you're interested in seeing uh, farm scenery and farm stories and hearing more about myself and my family, this video is for you, and thanks for watching. I finished this sweater on the drive and so um, I'm wearing it now. Maybe I'll include a photo so that you can see the, the full look of it. Started another knitting project while I was up there. I'll show you that in another video. This sweater is made from yarn that I dyed myself and they were all exhaust baths. After I've used a dye bath to get a, a richer color, there's still some color left in the dye, in the, in the bath. So I use every last bit by getting a little bit more color into these skeins of yarn and sometimes I put them in multiple times in different baths uh, to get enough color to make it attractive. <laughs> so anyway this is like one ball of each of a bunch of different colors of dye. <laughs> is it summer? <laughs> You're probably wondering. Yes, summer in Edmonton. Uh, it's about 12 degrees right now and it's probably going to go up to 22 or 23. This is typical for Edmonton at the end of June. And it's also pretty typical for Whitehorse. So I wanted to have a sweater with me for the cooler times. Actually, I think one of the nights it went down to four degrees Celsius while we were there. So sweater was welcome. But most of the time we were toasty warm and especially because we were indoors away from mosquitoes when we were at the farm when we were uh, doing stuff outside we were all bundled up not because of the cold but uh, just to protect ourselves from mosquitoes so when you see some of the scenes of us out there um, that's what the clothing is about Edmonton is at latitude 53. I grew up on a farm two hours north of here and Whitehorse is at latitude 60. So that just gives you an idea of how far north. My sister and her husband Tom have a farm outside of Whitehorse. That's where one of my other sisters and I drove to. So it was the three middle sisters, my youngest sister, Zan, Simon, who has the farm, and me. We have one older sibling and one younger one. The best thing about this trip was being able to spend so much time with Zan in the vehicle as we were driving, and also so much time visiting with Simon while we were there. And that, you know, that was the reason why we went. The next best thing were these bottle-fed lambs. Oh, I just loved helping my sister bottle feed them. They're adorable. The story of the bottle-fed lambs is that my nephew, who also lives in a cabin on the same property, had uh, moved a friend from Whitehorse to Vancouver. He borrowed his dad's truck and stock trailer to do that. And his parents said, you're not coming back empty. <laughs> and so he stopped off somewhere near Prince George and um, picked up these 
bottle fed lambs. These are lambs whose mothers either didn't have enough milk or they were part of multiple births. A couple of them were quintuplets. Didn't even know sheep could have that many babies. But anyway, the farmer there had a lot of other things going on, health crisis, and so the extra time and energy for feeding the bottle lambs was too much. And so now they're at my sister's farm. Uh, both my sister and I were wearing <laughs> these coveralls that had my brother's name on the pocket. So Darren and my other brother, Darren. <laughs> If you've been watching my videos, you probably know that I'm vegetarian. I'm the only one in my family who's vegetarian. We had a mixed farm, a lot of beef cattle. I never liked eating meat. I was 17 when I left home and haven't eaten meat since. Uh, but I have no uh, strong feelings about anybody else eating meat. I think it's your business. and. It's just not for me. I don't even like um, vegetarian fake meat. If it's too much like meat, I'm just totally squeamish about eating flesh. So, uh, my sister and brother-in-law have a meat shop. I won't show you any of the interiors, but I will include a link below. There's a, a really funny one minute video that was created by this guy who's an MLA, um, a member of the Legislative Assembly in the Yukon, he's also a broadcaster for CBC, I think, and uh, yeah, so there's a one minute clip of the meat shop there. If you're interested, it'll be in the notes down below. But we did hang out there a lot. They have a big front porch and Adirondack chairs and this really cool stool that my nephew made out of a tractor seat and a bunch of other parts and it was actually quite comfy to sit there and read and visit family when they weren't busy in the meat shop and there's so many people coming and going all the time. It's located in the same uh, property as the Takini gas station on the Klondike Highway. Uh, very busy popular spot they have lots of booze there for sale and a little cafe i saw something like when's the last time that you saw a public payphone i saw a couple of girls arriving on horseback uh, you never know what you're gonna see there <laughs> on the drive up by the way the gas pumps at muncho lake are practically antiques. I'll pop in a picture of those too. Simon and Tom also have a few beef cows. They have pigs, Tamworth pigs. And they had piglets. I didn't even go and see the piglets this time because I was just so enamored with the lambs. They have laying hens. Yeah, nice little farm. And Simon and I went foraging for dandelions. The dandelions there are huge, so big. Anyway, she made dandelion mustard from those. She also sells at her meat shop. We picked spruce tips. She made spruce tip marmalade. I'm thinking I should make some too. Our spruce tips are mostly finished here, but I think I might be able to find some trees in the river valley that are just still at the younger stage. I don't know. Got to do that soon though. The season passes, you know. <laughs> there are all, all kinds of wildflowers. Uh, we went to Miles Canyon, also called Quan Lin, and the rock formation there, they have these baby rocks. They're only about 8 million years old, but they're, it's a basaltic rock from an old lava flow that cooled into these columns. Um, I think six-sided or eight-sided columns. Anyway, it, pretty unique. And when I say 8 million years is young, I'm talking about in comparison to, you know, the mountains around there 
limestone and granite that are 100 million years old and 200 million years old. There's something about thinking about geologic time that I find really comforting. Yeah. I don't know. Do you get that? <laughs> anyway, wildflowers, there are lupins everywhere and uh, pussy toes and Jacob's Ladder and Northern Bluebells and the wild roses had just started blooming when we left. Of course, further south as we drove, there's lots and lots of wild roses. We did go into Whitehorse a couple of times. Um, there, were, there was a family of foxes that were playing right on the street in front of us. And I did take a video through the windshield, but there were so many bugs on the windshield that you could hardly see the foxes. I might just include a little still. Um, they weren't budging, so we just had to stop until they finally decided to leave the road. Uh, we went to the McBride Museum and I took a time-lapse video from the top floor so uh, you can see just a little bit of what Whitehorse it's like. It's right on the river uh, and there's people coming and going to food trucks. At the museum I saw this really cool dress made out of playing cards. There's also uh, a cabin You've probably heard of the Robert Service poem, The Cremation of Sam McGee. Well, Sam McGee was a real guy and his original cabin is there as a part of the museum. Kind of cool. That's my book content for this video. <laughs> so the uh, Quanlin Dunn is the largest First Nation in the Yukon and their territory includes Whitehorse and surrounding area. So we went to the Kwanlin Dunn Community Centre and I'm going to show you um, one of the art installations. It was conceptualized by Christy Belcourt. Um, you've probably heard me talk about her before and a book of her art. There's more book content in here. Anyway, this one, this piece of art commemorates missing and murdered Indigenous women. And it consists of um, a whole bunch of moccasin vamps. Um, that's just the top part of a moccasin that were created by Aboriginal sewing circles, um, women across the Yukon. And the they symbolize the incomplete lives of these women who are murdered. And then this larger art piece was created by a Tlingit artist, a local artist, Heather Bell Callahan. A really touching, uh, well done piece of art. They have these cool old log fences in the Yukon. Not ones that'll keep out elk. <laughs> uh, on my sister's farm they have you know, eight-foot fences to keep the elk out of their hay. But very picturesque. And the final clip at the end of this video is going to be a time-lapse 37 seconds of traveling eight kilometers down the gravel road that goes to my sister's farm and near the end of that video we go over a swamp mat so this was put there because the road was so torn up they've had so much rain and a gravel truck got stuck a grader came to pull it out and it got stuck and then another grader had to come and pull them both out and as you could imagine the road was just a mess by then it wasn't even passable I think for a couple of days and Simon and Tom's farm is on the other side of that luckily there was somebody home my nephew was able to 
drive to the part where the road was closed and sister and brother-in-law drove down the road the other way and then they walked across and left the vehicles so that they could, you know, get home. <laughs> Craziness. Anyway, that's it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this little video.